Welcome to another video from Guaylao 60. We're in a new old area of Nanning City. Uh, what do I mean by new old? Well, all of this stuff here that you see behind me. Well, not the white stuff over there. See, that's Walking Street. That's been here since at least 1936 because I was in a soup kitchen the other day and they actually had pictures and dates on them and showed back to 1936 for that area. But this area here was just built within the last couple of years. But then, the old, then you turn around and it's actually fashioned after the older buildings in this section of Nanning City. And this stuff here dates back a long, long time uh, into, uh, I would imagine a hundred and some years ago. The idea that Nanning is turning into a tourist attraction, yeah, it is, it's one of those things. As, it, as it's uh, the center for the Asian trade uh, with uh, the, the Asian and China conglomeration of countries, the, the head office is in Nanning. Uh, population is rising in Nanning. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in Nanning City. But that's not what this video is about. I just thought I'd start it off in a, with a nice background and everything nice and, and uh, beautiful and whatever. The lies, the utter lies and contempt that people have for China is on the point of frickin' ridiculous. Like, if you think about I was watching Alex from Reporter Fine Media sent me a, a podcast this morning, and he, when he does that, he wants me to, there's stuff in it he wants me to see that will tweak my turd. And, uh, and uh, it did. I was watching, like everybody knows that a group of us went up to, uh, to Chongqing and we were sponsored by I, I Chongqing. It's, a, it's an organization that, that promotes Chongqing as a, as, a, as a beautiful city as it is. And I was watching this one guy uh, sit in front of a green screen with his little buddy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say their names because and that would advertise their channels and I'm just not gonna do that. But uh, he go, he says, he, he, he gets into this, all these YouTubers went to Chongqing to promote it and, um, you know, uh, Chongqing is, is polluted and uh, I don't, uh, I don't like Chongqing as much as I like Sen Sen. I like Sen Sen so much more than Chongqing, but I've, uh, I've never been to Chongqing. That's the mentality that you're dealing with with these haters for China. Never been there, but know it's a bad place and it's polluted and it's just not as good as Shenzhen. You know what I mean? Like, and, but the people at watch, you see, they're playing to a specific crowd and they're just telling the specific crowd what they want to hear. They want to hear hate. They want to hear bad things about China. They want to, they just want to hear uh, bullshit rhetoric and garbage. And, uh, you know, I don't know whether these people believe what they're saying or, or they just spout it out there or actually do they watch what they put out there? I don't think so. Uh, it's done for the money. It's done for the, the people that watch the hateful stuff about China. And, uh, that's it, because if you've never been to Chongqing, you have no idea what kind of a city it is. I had never been to Chongqing before I went on, on this trip. And yes, it was sponsored by I Chongqing. I paid my own airfare and Weifang's airfare there and back. They supplied hotel rooms and, and, uh, and uh, food and transportation in the city and stuff like that, for the most part. But I saw one of the neatest cities I've ever seen, a mega city, a city that has so much going for it and the women are beautiful. Don't tell my wife I said that. No, seriously, they are. That I would say Chongqing has to have the most beautiful women in the frickin' world, if, if not China. Uh, you know, so, and it wasn't polluted, it, 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 it was uh, a 30 million person city. So there is some pollution, but uh, overall in China, you're not going to get a lot of pollution anymore. They're they're cleaning up the act, and, and uh, that's way of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna cross over, and I'll try not to get run over here. I'm gonna cross over so you can see down Minzu Dadao here in Nanning City, a city of seven and a half million people, and you tell me if it's as polluted as Los Angeles. Like I can, I can honestly tell you that Nanning at seven and a half million people has not as much pollution as, as a place like Los Angeles. 
Back in 1977, I was on the destroyer escort HMCS Saskatchewan about 150 miles off the coast of Los Angeles. And this was 1977. And you could see a big brown dome. And you knew that's where Los Angeles was. Uh, polluted? You bet your bottom dollar it's polluted. Plus, uh, I've noticed that, that there's such a big uh, influx of homeless people in the United States. They are getting trounced there. People are losing their homes. People are having a bad time. Uh, there's more drug abuse. There's more alcohol abuse. There's just more people um, not getting by, I guess. And uh, I watched a, a video from a German guy, and I'm going to put maybe little, little bits and pieces if I can find that video again, about the homeless people at Venice Beach. And Venice Beach, if nobody, if you don't know about Venice Beach, Venice Beach has got to be one of the highest end beaches, or used to be, in all of the United States. Like, I'm telling you, this the property values there are through the roof. To rent shops by Venice Beach will cost you tens of thousands of dollars per month. It's just one of those things. And now, it's uh, it's basically a homeless camp. So all around there, uh, the, the roads up to it, on the beach, all of the stuff. So you can be homeless and have beachfront territory in, uh, in uh, California. You can live right on the beach. Plus, another thing when you're walking around, you see the homeless people because there's some of them that are rabid, scary and crazy with needles in their arms, drug addicts and uh, just psychotic and have mental disorders and all of that other stuff that goes along with uh, being homeless. Not all homeless people are screwed up. Some people just have bad luck, uh, don't have a place to live, don't have the skills, you know, all of this other stuff. You see, and. This is this is this is a rare glimpse into uh, a homeless person in in Nanning. Uh, this guy behind me, he's homeless. This lady here, she's homeless. Uh, you, you you get that, you get that here in in uh, China, just like you get it anywhere else. There are people that fall through the cracks. But you know what? There's not a lot of them. There's, it's not miles and miles of tent cities. There's, they're, they're homeless because they probably have mental issues and the families just give up on them. Uh, they're homeless because uh, maybe they've just been down on their luck. They're not homeless because they have drug habits. They're not homeless because they have an alcohol habit. Alcohol habit? Where have I heard that before? Uh, they're, they're homeless because there's something mentally probably wrong with them and that's why the that's why they're on the street you're never going to freeze here that's for damn sure but it's not an epidemic like it is in the united states but everybody's got their side of this story you see i promote china because i think china is a great place it's a very safe place it's it's cleaner than it was 10 15 years ago like pollution wise really it it, it is I think it's because in Nanning they've got the subway, they've got less buses. The buses aren't diesel anymore, they're, they're natural gas. Uh, you've got a lot of electric cars, you've got a lot, a lot of electric bikes, you've got, uh, you know, a, a government that is trying to make it cleaner for the citizens. In the United States, they still have the old technology. They don't have the subways. They still got the diesel buses, as far as I know. Uh, in Canada, they've gone to natural gas. Um, they're, they're not big into electric vehicles like they are here. Uh, you don't have electric scooters running around. It's, it's just one of those things. So you're going to have more pollution per person on the ground, per capita type thing. Uh, the, the stores are all open. Nothing's closed here anymore, which is, which is sort of nice. Uh, uh, if you look around, there's very few people wearing masks. There's still people that do wear masks, but uh, not like there was three, four months ago, which, uh, which, is, sort of, which is sort of good too, because it's, it just means that the people are, are sort of coming out of their shell. They're, they're starting to uh, believe that the COVID-19 is finished, and that we're not going to have a problem with it here anymore because of the the constraints let's call them constraints lockdowns and uh all of the things that you had to go through in china for them to get this under control 
and uh, they have it under control now and uh, the people feel safe and that's part of living in a community that's, that's healthy, happy, safe and content is feeling safe. And because China's got everything under control, they know that they, they have the, the methods that they can beat this thing back, even if it rears its ugly head again, they're getting more confident. Oh yes, uh, Ronnie the Swede is on his way back. He texted me yesterday, last night, and he's on his way back to Nanning. So that would mean Dave for Britain would probably uh, be here pretty quick. So the foreigners are starting to trickle back into China because up until now, there has been very few foreigners in Nanning, for one thing. I'm not sure about Beijing, Shanghai, places like that are probably a little bit different, but uh, seeing a foreigner here is far and few between. I've just seen Chinese people and they're everywhere. They're, they're all around me. So you see, the world in China is back to normal. Well, as normal as it can be in 2020, because 2020 is not a normal, uh, a normal year by any means, anywhere in this world. But as 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 China came out of this pandemic with flying colors, like telling you, with flying colors, uh, as China's economy is growing, as as the other countries that weren't as diligent. Uh, are hurting for a longer period of time and more of their citizens are passing away because of the incompetence of their leaders and uh, their policies. You're going to see more rhetoric out there. You're going to see more rhetoric on the mainstream media from politicians. Maybe when Trump is gone here in a couple of weeks because like he is bombing big time. Uh, maybe the YouTubers uh, uh, well, you'll see more rhetoric from the YouTubers just for the fact that that's what they do. That's the only way they're going to make money and uh, that's the way it is. There is one pollution that they have here in mainland China. Noise pollution. Yes, noise pollution is a problem here. Uh, they don't have any rules and regulations on just blaring music out. People with loudspeakers and trying to sell their guard. They don't have any rules and regulations on uh, honking of horns and all of those things. So when you get into a highly populated area like I am right now in the Chaoyang district of, uh, of Nanning, you have noise pollution. But there is no air pollution. Today is nice. You know, in the wintertime, it gets a little bit worse. But uh, uh, summertime, spring, fall, summertime, never a problem. But as you know, noise pollution. So when you're listening to the rhetoric that's being spouted by a bunch of people over there, they're not over here in China, uh, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, if somebody says that they don't like a place, and some place is way better than, uh, than, than that place, but then they say in a, their second breath that, oh, and I, but I've never been to that place. Well, you, you, you know how much how much uh, credit you can give it. Uh, zero, exactly. Uh, they're just talking to their hateful crowd. They're just talking to the people that. Uh, they're just telling those people what they want to hear. They're they're not telling you any truths. They're they're not telling you these guys aren't brain surgeons. You know the idea that they'd even go on uh, YouTube or any or any medium of any sort and say, "Well, this place is better than this place," but I've never been to that place. Shows you the intelligence that we're dealing with here. So uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt. And that, my friends, is another video from Guilao 60. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the bell. Don't forget to resubscribe. And whatever you do, don't forget to put a couple bucks in the children's Patreon account. It's for a good cause. Poor rural Chinese children, they just need a helping hand. Help me help them. Thanks for watching. Bye now. Yes, that's right, folks. That's a couple dozen of those birds that don't exist. Go figure, eh?